Okay, in, okay, in this video we have uh, example 8.7 which uh, asks us to find the deflection at point B and at point C. So first what I'm going to do is I'm not going to draw the MEI. I'm going to draw the elastic curve first because it helps me visualize where um, compression and tension is or if uh, compression occurs at the top or if tension occurs at the top which then helps me find, uh, which helps me create my moment EI diagram. It, it really simplifies it for me. So that's how I do it. Uh, so let's go ahead and try to visualize how, it, how this structure would um, look like if it was deformed. So if we have just a 500 concentrated moment at the end and no forces or anything else acting on the support, then we can see that this part can just go like that, right? So it would just kind of go like a curve. Well, let me try it a little bit more exaggerated, but it's like a curve, right? And as you can see, it's not really clear, but it's going, um, it's under compression at the top and it's under tension. You can really see it over here, but uh, throughout it's actually under compression at the top and uh, tension at the bottom. But we're just gonna analyze at the top and it's uh, under compression, which means positive moment. So our moment should be positive, okay? And now uh, another predicament is that we have two beams with different eyes. Beam AB has so the I value is twice the value of BC. So I AB is equal to two times I BC. So what we what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, well the moment should just be of straight 500 box right. But if we are to draw so this is 500 over here. But if we are to draw uh, moment EI diagram, we have to divide 500 by EI BC. I'll tell you uh, well we can we can choose AB but we'll, we'll, we'll stick to BC because that's what the book shows. So BC and what we have here is uh, 500 but it jumps. It jumps so what happens is from here, so the value of MEI at this point is 250. I'll tell you why in a second. Let me just clean this up. So this is how the moment diagram should look like. And why is it 250? Because M over EI, M over E I M over E I for this beam is 500 over E times I A B right but I A B is 2 times I B C times 2 times I B C okay so we can cancel this out and this would be 250 so the re so really what we have is 250 over e i b c if we have everything in terms of one certain i then the calculations are so much easier you can go ahead and uh put m over e i i i a b over here and um m over e i b c over here and put the exact values but it, it, it's just more uh, numbers to put in the calculator and your answers won't be as exact as this method so that's why uh, the book shows this step over here okay now we have our moment EI diagram now it's just simple to get rotation so well to get deflection what we have to do is get rotation first so let's go ahead and get rotation at point B because we're asked to find deflection at point B so to get the rotation at point B it's simply 250 over EI BC times the area or times 4 which gives us the area 
and remember this is one point that I didn't mention in the previous video just for understanding sake uh, this area gives us the rotation because if you remember the deflection is represented as V right and if you remember V prime is equal to rotation and V double prime is equal to moment and another so the so if you take the derivative of V you get rotation and if you take the rotation or if you take the derivative of rotation then you get moment so if you take double derivative of V you get moment likewise if you take the integral of moment you get rotation and if you take the integral of rotation you get V so if you take double integral of moment you get rotation now why I'm saying this is because to get the integral of moment gives us rotation and essentially what integral means is that we take the area under the curve so the, w the area under this moment curve will give us the next level which is the rotation so integral gives us rotation if you were to draw a curve for rotation and take the area under that curve we would get deflection it's 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 just it's a very um it's not really that important to know but i just wanted you guys to understand how it works so yeah so yeah we have the area which is 250 times 4 over eibc so a thousand over e i b c so this is the rotation at b if we if we want the deflection at b sometimes it's denoted as a little triangle or delta then we take uh, we take our rotation which is a thousand over e i this is at, at this point right we want the rotation at this point we so the area under consideration so far is just this rectangle so we get the area which gives us the rotation then we multiply it by the centroid of this area the centroid for a rectangle is 2 meters it's at 2 meters this is 2 by the way so the centroid is at 2 meters so we just simply multiply it by 2 meters and that gives us deflection okay so at point B it's very simple so the answer is uh, 2000 over EIBC now if we want to calculate the rotation at point C this is 3 meters let me clean this up and then we'll calculate uh, the, uh, the deflection at point C so to find the deflection at point C what we have to do is get the area find the area and multiply it from the centroid of that area to the point we're calculating which in this case is uh, at 7 meters so how well it's 4 plus 3 7 so 7 meters so how uh, how I how the book does it is um, 250 times 4 this is deflection at C times 4 over EI BC of course multiplied by what is the centroid of this shape the centroid of this shape is at 2 meters right it's at 2 meters and we want it we want the deflection at point C so it's 2 plus 3 so in total it's 5 so 2 plus 3 gives us a deflection at point C if we wanted deflection at uh, let's say 6 or 5.5 meters which is over here then we would do this times 2 plus 1.5 which is 3.5 but since we want the deflection at point C it's times 5 plus the area of this rectangle which is 3 times 500 and what is the centroid of this rectangle it's at a 1.5 it's 1.5 meters away from C 
so we multiplied by 1.5 over EI BC and in total we should get something like 7250 over EI BC all right and if you calculate it out you'll get the deflection which should be a very small number and it's plus because the elastic curve is going under compression at the top and uh, that means the moment is positive which is why our deflection is positive in this case if we had a triangle here and a rectangle here then the uh, the story would be a little bit different we would take the uh, we would calculate the area of this triangle and multiply it from this from the centroid which is about one third from this side and then drag it to point C so it'd be well I haven't really listed the details but that's that's the concept that we have to work with we always have to take the area and drag it to the point to which we are calculating okay so yeah it's very straightforward once you get the moment diagram you should be able to calculate deflection in like a minute or two all right so that's how you find deflection with the moment area theorem.